Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms. And behind me is a big tree I recently cut down. It's actually three trees that were grown together and they go off in three directions and each of them poses their own hazards. So I spent a tremendous amount of time watching videos about how to cut down trees, different techniques, trying to learn everything I can so that as I cut down more and more trees, I can gain that experience and do it as safely as possible. Now, as many videos as I've watched on how to cut down a tree, I really have a hard time finding good videos about what to do once the tree's on the ground. There are some out there, but it's a lot more scattered. So today, I'm going to take this section of tree right here that is actually still split into two pieces. It's split but not separated, and it's got a big bow in it. It's connected to the ground in a lot of places and the end of it's actually leaning on my building a little bit. And I'm gonna methodically go through and, and try to get this thing bucked up. And with each cut, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I see. And I'm not really talking as trying to be an expert and teach you. I'm just gonna talk about what I see and what I'm going to do because of what I see. And I'm hoping, like happens in a lot of my videos, that you guys with experience leave in the comments anything that I do right or wrong. Give me some feedback on that. We'll have a nice conversation about safety and bucking up a big tree like this. So the first thing I can say that I know to be factual and is pretty straightforward really is that every piece of the tree that you're going to buck up is under some kind of compression or tension. It's actually both. So a log that's hanging up in the air and is not touching anything on this end is on tension on the top. The top is trying to stretch because the weight is pulling down. So it's being stretched. That's tension. The bottom is being compressed and the fibers are being compressed as it tries to push down. So where would your saw get stuck on a cut like that? It would get stuck on the compression wood. So one thing I can say for certain is you basically always want to cut the compression wood first and then cut the tension wood. That keeps you from getting your bar cut. The difficult part in some circumstances is telling, deciding if where the tension and compression are. So I'm going to go through this. I'm probably going to make some mistakes, get my bar caught, all that. And as it happens, I'm going to show it to you. So this isn't just filtering out the ones that go well. So let's get started on the tree. Okay, so we've got a long branch right here that is not touching anything on the other end. So as I said before, the tension is definitely on the top. So you cut compression first. Now, most people would just walk up and cut this from the top. Would that work? Yes, probably. Probably what would happen is when you get three-fourths of the way through, it's going to start to fall. You can finish your cut. It's going to have some hanging wood there. It's kind of a messier way to cut it. So we're going to cut the compression just like we would a larger one and then cut the tension. And normally, I don't try to have my cuts land on top of each other. If I've got one cut on the top, I try to have the bottom cut come off of it the width of the bar at least, an eighth of an inch or maybe a little more.
So I was careful that every cut I made up there was the same type of cut. Suspend it up in the air, cut the compression, come down and cut the tension. Every one of those fell straight down. There was never anything that didn't go smoothly or I never got my bar stuck or anything like that. Now we come into a more interesting section of the tree. So, we're on the ground down here. I want to take this big section off right here. So it's connected to a point in the trunk that's up in the air. And this end is on the ground and these two legs are on the ground. Okay, that leg's before the branch. So that's on the ground. This is connected to the tree. So if I cut it back here, if I cut it at this notch back here, that end wants to drop. So that is compression on the top, tension on the bottom. So I would cut that the opposite way that I've been cutting. Now that I've said that, I'm gonna walk around it and say, what did I miss? Is this leg putting pressure some other way? What's happening up here on the ground? Let's just have a look. So I think before I make that cut, I'm gonna remove this because this branch right here is a hazard for me to back up. If I'm making this cut and it comes towards me, I wouldn't be able to back up because of that branch. Now that's a small branch, but it does have weight on it down here, which means that the top is in compression. So I need to cut that little branch from the top and then from the bottom. Same thing on this small branch right here. So I'm gonna get those two out of the way before making the bigger cut. So, this is compression on the top, so I'll make my cut on the top first. Then, I'll make my cut on the bottom, just slightly offset, and it should fall straight down. Now, it's got a little bit of a chance of falling towards me, but I have a long bar, and it's up in the air, so I can stay a little bit away from it. The other thing I'm going to do, the top is under compression. When I make my top cut, it's going to want to close. And... To keep it from closing before I'm ready, I'll make my top cut, then I'll knock a wedge into that spot, then I'll make my bottom cut. And if you didn't give it any thought, this is the one that you might get wrong and think that you want to cut it the other way. But you've really just got to think about it. And I could still be wrong because the variable that we don't know is how much pressure is on that, that end down there. If that end was suspended, I would cut it the opposite way but I feel like it has pressure into the ground on that end. Yeah, I'm pretty confident that it is under pressure on that end. So I'm gonna get wedges and something to drive them with, gas and oil in the big saw, and we'll get started. Okay, so that cut went according to plan. Now, we've got the worst part left. And I think what I wanna do is just take a minute and relax and clear all this other debris that we've already cut. So I'm gonna grab the skid loader because it already has a grapple on it and I'm gonna drag all this out of the way 
and leave just these two big sections and we'll assess the best way to deal with those. All right, so the shadows are making this difficult, but I don't really like the way these two are just barely connected to each other at that end because it's complicating the forces we're dealing with on the rest of the logs. It's possible to deal with this the way it is, but I have the option with this machine to drag this and try to flip this down to where it has less complicated forces on it making it an easier cut and since I have that option I'm going to use it and see if I can pull this this top section down and deal with the two pieces separately. Now that we got it separated let's deal with the smaller piece first. We have a curved log that's touching the ground on both ends. So, with that bow, if you separated the middle, how's it going to want to fall? It's going to fall like this. That makes compression on the top. So, we'll follow the same pattern we've been doing, make our top cut first. Okay, so this one's kind of similar. We are touching the ground right where I'm standing on the fat part of the log. Then 90% of this is off the ground because of that crook up there. When I stopped to talk to the camera, I was gonna cut right where I'm standing, but I've decided to just take that little crook off first. I don't wanna just say something and that means I do it. Let me look at it. I'm gonna cut it up there in that bend and make this into a straight log. Okay, so the weight is higher here. If it fell, it would wanna come down. That means compression is on the top. Cut the top first. We're back to the cuts we made at the start of the video with the smaller saw. The entire end is off the ground. It wants to fall that way. That means tension is on the top. Compression is on the bottom. Always cut compression first. We will cut from the bottom.
I've got a bad habit of just walking up to a tree and starting to cut. And that's a good way to end up with a your bar hung up or something dangerous happened, you can get hurt. So what I've told myself after the last time I got my bar cut, and it's still gonna happen, but what I told myself is from now on, every cut, I'm gonna make sure I stop and look at it, tension and compression, until it becomes so natural I don't have to think anymore. But I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.